So Aaron, you're out there detecting, right? You said, I think you maybe you're out there detecting with your dad. And uh, why don't you tell us the story of how you came upon this, uh, this find that uh, we're calling the war log. Can you give us some background mm-hmm. history on that without getting too specific? Well, location. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, actually I was by myself that day. I, mm. and I did, I haven't mentioned, uh, my wife, Tara, and we had our, we had a baby Hannah, um, back last October. So she just turned a year old. So Excellent. this past year I've, I've actually, I've, I've hardly done well, especially this summer, I've really done hardly any detecting. And, um, I got I got in the river once or maybe twice with my dad earlier in the summer, and um, anyway, that's it was getting kind of towards the end of summer. I think it was in uh, late August, and I called him. I only had a, probably a few hours to go, and I, he was busy, so I just went by myself. And I I went I went back to a spot that we really really just it was kind of new to us, um, of last year. We went to it last year a few times, uh, really for the first time. And we've found a few pretty good things. I found, I think the first time we were there, found several civil war bullets. And then I found a complete bayonet and it was, you know, a great, great find. Um, found a few other odds and end things. I found the buck or the hooks out of a buckle, a, the, and um, a trigger guard off of a musket, and then I think like <laughs> last year, my cousin found a Hotchkiss artillery shell in <clears> this <throat> area. Wow! Like and in the water? So, yeah, yeah, in the river. Wow, wow! And found several bullets, uh, and, and all this stuff from this. I mean, I'm talking when once you get in the river. Um. In the, at this location, you could literally start finding things, you know, the second you step your foot in the river, you know, Civil That's War amazing. Uh, items. And mm-hmm. then we wade down the river. Typically, we'll just wade down the river and and probably, uh, I want to say close to a mile. May, it may not be that far, but through that whole distance, you could find, you know, relics anywhere down through there. So, mm-hmm. um Anyways, last year we, you know, it was the first time we went there. So, um, back in August, I had a few hours, so I went back over there, and I was just happy to go. <laughs> I was just happy to get out of the house and and uh, get in the river for a couple hours. And I found a couple uh, bullets, Civil War bullets, pretty quick. So I was pretty, really, pretty happy just to find them. I didn't really expect too much that day. Um, and I actually, I found something really kind of cool. If you, you probably maybe seen it on my Instagram, Instagram page, I found this little, uh, pouch It's like a case logic, uh, a little zippered po- uh, pouch that, you know, somebody maybe had a digital camera in years ago or a cell phone. Mm. And I found this little pouch and when I picked it up, I could feel that, you know, there was stuff inside it. And um, when I op- unzipped it, I'm, you know, standing there in the river. It was completely full of just a bunch of jewelry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it kind of blew me. It blew me away because, first off, I rarely ever find any uh, jewelry rings or, or anything like that just because I'm usually, you know, out detecting these really old sites. So, anyway, I, you know, I saw that and I thought, man, that is, that's awesome. Uh, it turns out they were pretty much all just junk. I think there was two or three silver rings in it, a silver earring. There was like 12 rings, a couple necklaces, just a, it was just full of stuff. Jeez. But, so anyway, that was, you know, a really cool find. Um, so I found that and, uh, went on down the river a little bit and, I came up on the, a spot, and and I, it, 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 as soon as I got there, I immediately remembered that a year ago there was this huge tree that had fell basically across the river. You know, so the it, the you know it was growing out of say the left hand river bank, and it fell over and was literally blocking the the river. And I and I just remembered that because last year we would have to. 
um, go around around it, you know, on the far right hand side, just to kind of get around it. So when I got up to this spot uh, this year, I, I immediately noticed that that tree was gone. Uh, it just wasn't. It was. It was completely gone. Um, and that that's really that's in that that's really one kind of a tip or advice I always give people about the rivers is they're kind of like always changing. Um, especially, you know, we get some pretty big rains, uh, floods normally during the winter months. So obviously during this past winter, uh, you know, we had a big, you know, probably a couple of big floods and that it just washed that tree and just moved it, you know, just, <laughs> it was just completely gone, which, wow. um, which is interesting. But when I saw that, I, I thought to myself, Oh, well that, that bank on the left-hand side where that tree had been, I know for a fact we never really detected in that little area, you know? Yeah. So that, that's what I, I went straight over there and I got, I got in that little area near the bank and I found a, a fired a civil war bullet. And in the, um, in the bank, nope, like I, in the, in the roots of the tree type thing. Uh, well, no, it was in, it was in the, in the kind of near the bank, you know, probably mm -hmm. five or six feet from it. Yeah. And then, then I started finding more of them. I found, I started finding several just, uh, and they were all fired three ringers. All fired, wow. Jeez. Yeah, they were all fired bullets and they were all just in this, uh, kind of a small area, you know, pretty close to the, uh, to the bank there. And, um, I, I then I kind of, I, as I'm finding them, I'm there, I'm getting closer and closer to the actual, you know, bank of the river. And then I noticed there was a log laying down in the, in the water um, and I'm finding bullets just right up against it. And so there was like a little spot where I could kind of stick my coil under that log a little bit and it was still, you know, it was going off. So mm. I got down to my pen. You to be wondering what's going on. <laughs> what's, what's this yeah. all about? Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, and I, I saw, I started just pulling out all these fired bullets. They were just, so I found a bunch of them just, completely just directly under this log and um i mean it, it was kind of one of those deals where i don't know if you've ever you know it's only happened to me a few times where you you know it's kind of bad to say but it's like you kind of get tired of digging them <laughs> you know you find in like so many which i it, trust right. me that's only happened to me twice in my life but you I've know, seen the White Oak Museum. Fired. I know you can find too many. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Oh my goodness. All right. So I started finding. You know, they were all just. You know, and their fired bullets are just kind of ugly, and uh, you know, n not the best thing to find. And I was actually wanting to just kind of keep on going down the river bank, but, um, but like I said, I was sticking my pin pointer under this log, and and there was quite a bit of mud right under the log and so my pin pointer was just going off and i was pulling out just digging out with my hands the mud and, and finding these bullets and then um so then i i found um a bullet and when i grabbed it it it's it was had like a round um i mean it was in a it was still in a, a piece of wood and it, it but it's hard to explain, but it's like it was like a little round cocoon. It almost looked like a it was just stuck in this little round piece of wood, you know, it was just crazy. I've never um found anything like that before. And I've always just thought that stuff was cool. I've I've even several years ago I bought, uh, at the Civil War show, I bought a bullet stuck in wood. You know, you'll you see those oh, yeah. that yeah. yeah there's a bullet in a piece of wood. To me that's cool. That's yeah, so very cool. Yeah. Are, rare yeah, and, it's just, and just highly yeah. collectible and just cool. I mean, displays beautiful. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's just unusual and cool and, and honestly I never it's just something that people don't find here and I never even thought about finding one. But so uh I found that that one bullet and it's just in this little round piece of wood and then i found a couple more like that and uh two or three more and then i i could feel my hand under that log and i could feel like an, another um a couple more that they were still stuck to the log well i'm 
I mean, at this time, I'm not even really thinking about what's, I hadn't really comprehended, you know, what's going on here. And um, I just, with my hand, I literally just pulled on it and broke it off. I broke off a couple of these. I know for a fact I broke off um, at least two of these bullets still stuck in the in the wood. And so they were still stuck to the log. Mm. And um, <clears throat> and then I could feel more of them. I could, I could feel a few more stuck to the log. And, and they were, I couldn't break them off. They were really stuck on there good, you know. Yeah. So um, that's when I kind of realized, I was like, hey, this is pretty cool. Um, I mean, I was happy with what I'd already found. And then that now I'm thinking, hey, there's a couple more of these still stuck on this tree. And I'm thinking this would be really cool if I brought a saw over here and just like cut out. I'm thinking I could cut out like a little piece of this log, you know, maybe like a foot wide. And maybe it had like two or three of these bullets still stuck up to it. So that's kind of my, that was my thought at that time. Uh, and uh, I, basically I, that was it for that day. I had to leave and I kind of had already, found, you know, found, all, I ended up finding, I think like 20, I found like 26 Civil War bullets that day. And I, I think <laughs> about 24 of them, but like 24 of them were right there under that log. Oh, and that, that really was, I don't, that's, that maybe is the most bullets I'd ever found in a single day. Um, I'm pretty sure that was the most I'd ever found um, anywhere, any day. So um, that was pretty much it for that day. And I went home thinking, man, I'd like to go back and like cut out a little piece of that. Right. I mean, so, you know, you look, you look at you when I was looking through the pictures, it was like, yeah. yeah, it was right next to the bank. Kind of, there was this eroded bank that was eroded away. Big old, you know, roots of the tree kind of sticking down into the, into the river and stuff. And, you know, you come along, you know, it's not real common, but you've I've seen more people find banks of, uh, you know, stores of drop bullets or unfired bullets in bulk like that in different areas. Yeah. Um, either, you know, came down in a cartridge can or something and spilled or something, but they, uh, but fired all yeah. in the same place. You got it. You know, you're like, how, you know, what were they, what were they, were they all shooting in this one direction? Were they, <laughs> but then you find that target practice, you start, you start, yeah, you start piecing the clues together. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And you know, I've, I've done that a few times where I found several kind of one spot and actually, uh, last year in that same general area, just probably like a hundred yards down the river, kind of around the, the bend of the river, I found a, just in one little area, I found probably 10 or 12 fired bullets. And I'm, and, and, and also to kind of add to the context of everything on the one side of the river, the, or the opposite side, there was a pretty large uh, camp, a uh, union camp. Uh, during the war so i'm thinking you know when you, when you find something like that at least several fired bullets in one small area you know i'm immediately thinking well they they walked over there and they had a target practice or you know they were basically standing on one bank and just fired their muskets across the river into a tree or just a mm. you know just target practice that's, so, uh, that's well, what i always maybe they figured. didn't have uh what what is that thing called where you, you screw you screw it in and then they they pull the the bullet out the ejector mm -hmm. the bullet ejector thing yeah, the worm the worm, worm yeah. yeah maybe they didn't have those and for them to unload they just you know just shot it yeah that I mean I don't know right mm. uh, yeah and I think they did that a lot I, I think, yeah it's you a know, heck of we, a lot we easier find, we find several of the or we really don't you, you do find some bullets that have been pulled uh, but I I think I'm just, you know, I think a lot of the times they would probably just go shoot, shoot the gun if they needed yeah. to unload it. Right. They would just, you know, that was easier than pulling it out. Right. So they would just go shoot it, you know, and maybe they went to the same spot every day and shot it <laughs> kind of in the same area or the same, you know, aimed at the same tree or rock. Um, that, that's, that's our, you know, kind of my theory anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Were you able to uh, identify different types of bullets once you started looking at what was in that tree? Did you have a variety or were they all very similar? 
They're, you know, I think they're all balls. the same. Yeah. Three yeah. ring mini balls. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Uh, we're looking at the so, pictures. If you, guys, if you guys go to Aaron's uh, Instagram page, which we have the link in the chat, and we also have a link down below in the description, uh, and you click on one of the pictures, he has a few pictures attached to it. So once you open up a picture, there's a great picture of him sitting on this log or next to the log, and uh, you can see a bunch of the bullets in the log. And then as you scroll through, you're seeing more pictures of them kind of dealing with this log uh, later mm-hmm. on. But... Whew, how many did you start noticing were in this log? Like, you know, more than five, more than 10. What were you thinking? Well, you know, that, so the day I found it, I really just, I could definitely feel, um, a three or four. And, and I really just thought that's how many were in it or still in it three or four. So when I left that day, that was what I thought, you know, and I just thought, like I said, you know, I could just cut out a little small little section and just take home that little section um, yeah. of the log. So, and, and that, that would have been cool, right? That, that would have been cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That would, yeah. It, it would have been lighter. Too. Of the year. Awesome. <laughs> of the year, yeah. so, uh, and also, I probably did add that the, the log, um, it was completely underwater, but there was really only uh, a little bit of water on top of it. So, um if that makes sense, it was just under the, you know, the surface. Yeah. Uh, probably six or eight inches. And the, and the river there is pretty shallow to begin with. It's only about knee deep. Yeah. Yeah. The pictures show that real well too. Yep. Pictures show that real well. Um, um, so yeah, so we, so basically I went home, you know, thinking about it and, uh, you know, told, called my dad and told him what I'd found and, and uh, so we kind of started thinking like a game plan on like going back and cutting this uh, little piece out. And um, so we planned on that. Uh, it was like a really like two weeks later, we planned on going back. And this time he, um, we've, we've got a kayak. So we took the kayak and I, in my head, like I, I felt like the log was only like about, 12 inches wide and maybe eight inches thick. And so like when we were planning on cutting this out, I thought, Oh, we could just take like a little hand saw. I've got, you know, one of those bow saws. Yeah. Um, yeah, no that, that, that should cut right through it. Yeah. No problem. That, that no should problem, do yeah. it. So we took, yeah, we took it and we went back and, uh, I, well, and first off, so, so we, we thought, well, one, the, we need to kind of dislodge this log. You know, it's stuck down in the mud, and then this there was a tree growing uh, in the bank, and some of those roots of that of that tree had kind of went came over top of this log, and it was really only like two roots that were kind of growing over top of it. So we figured, well, we need to you know dislodge it first. And so I did cut the, um, the one root was like as big around as your arm and it (laughs) just cutting it was a, you know, wasn't that easy with that little saw. Um, so we, we, I did that. And then we, um, the, then after we cut that one law or uh, root and maybe another smaller one, we just kind of, we kind of got the log and wiggled it and, and, and kind of dug it out and it, kind of popped loose from the mud um you know pretty pretty easily really and um and then that's kind of when i also realized this thing's a lot bigger than i originally thought so, <laughs> no, it was huge are you kidding i was looking at those pictures and yeah. I was thinking, glad that can well, floated after that <laughs> they were huge yeah it's so it's probably like uh 10 or 12 feet long and but again you know i didn't plan on i'm just again just thinking about cutting out a little piece of it right yeah yeah um but it's it's when, once we got it dislodged we um rolled it over and then that's when we saw hey there's several bullets still stuck Gosh. in this tree you know originally i thought there were maybe two or three or four and then once we flipped it over we saw several still stuck in the tree and, I, and and not just one little area. They were from one end to the other. 
So almost the whole yeah, length definitely. of this log had bullets stuck yeah. in it. Probably definitely target practice, right? I mean, right. First of all, the tree is thick. It's a big tree. Yeah. So it was being a great, you know, target for them to shoot at. And, uh, man, it's incredible. I was reading your story on your Facebook page and uh, talking about how much they weighed and kind of how you had to yeah. try to get them yeah. out of the river. And because, uh, you know, they being logs, I'm sure they would float a little bit. Uh, but you got to get them out of that water and you got to get <laughs> yeah. them up the banks and, and, you know, into some kind of vehicle. And that's another story. Hey, real quick, Aaron, yeah, real yeah. quick. Uh, I want to tell everyone else that's listening live right now, we're going to go ahead and open up the phone lines. Um, if you want to have a question for Aaron about this story, about the war log or anything that uh, he's mentioned tonight, feel free to call all, call in. Phone number here is 270-495-0311. One five again two seven zero four nine five zero three one five. Call on in and then we'll put you on the air. You can ask your question and see if Aaron would answer it for you. Tony, we have a question in the chat, don't we? Yeah. Before we get to, we're gonna jump back into the story here in a second. But um, Ohio Relic Hunter in the chat, the live chat here on Spreaker.com, uh, he asked, "What kind of wood was the log, and have you counted the rings to see how old it is?" That's a great question, and everybody keeps asking me that. And no, I don't know what kind of wood it is, but um, it definitely is a heavy, very dense wood. And we're guessing it's an oak. Um, and and I've actually uh, I've been I've talked to a couple people recently, and I want to try to send a piece of it off to figure out what kind of wood it is because, yeah, everybody keeps asking that, and, I, and it would be just kind of cool to know, but. Uh, I'm guessing it was a, an oak or, or something similar. Nice. Yeah. It looks amazing. I mean, you can see all these pictures on his Instagram page if you want to go over there and check it out. He also has a cool story. I think he's got a three- or four-part story that he wrote along with the photos. So uh, it's just a great story to look in. So you see all these bullets in this tree, and you're like, mm -hmm. okay, we got to get this out of here. So you start – I guess at yeah. some point you decide to cut it up, and then how would you guys get – how many pieces, first of all, how much do you think they weighed, and then how would you end up getting them out of the river? Well, so the day we flipped it over and I had the handsaw, we actually – I started cutting the log itself with it, and it, we realized pretty quick that this was not going to work. I mean, it seemed like we cut for, you know, I don't know how, how long, 20 minutes, and barely, you know, barely did anything. So we definitely realized that we were – that was not going to work. Um so um, we figured we were going to have to uh, do definitely do something different. So we ended up leaving that day, the second trip. And I, I, w I will add I, that day I found probably, I found like 13 more bullets just loose kind of under the log. Um, so we, uh, me and dad left the log um, that day and went home. And kind of, we, we really just had to like think about it and come up with a game plan and figure out how to, get this so definitely we figured we would need a chainsaw and um i we um i've i've got a canoe and we had a kayak also so we took we took the canoe and the kayak and a chainsaw and we also we brought our cousin mark with us this trip so we figured yeah we're definitely gonna need some help and um so we went we made another third trip to it and this time we got once we got down there to it we were able to cut it up um using the chainsaw so the uh the log was uh, roughly 10 to 12 feet long and we ended up cutting it up into three pieces and um we um you know obviously it would have been just incredible to leave it in one piece but everybody uh, there, there, it would have been impossible, you know, to get it out. Um, wh one, it was probably three quarters of a mile, half a mile from where we parked the truck. And it's just not accessible. It's not like we could just drive a truck uh, right down to it. There's just no way. So uh, we made the decision kind of, and we, we figured out where we wanted to cut it up. And so we ended up cutting it up into three pieces. And then we loaded uh, the two big pieces into the canoe, and they, 
I'm each each piece is probably like uh, three to three and a half feet long. And I'm guessing that they probably each weighed over 200 pounds. <laughs> so, you know, it was, yeah. When we put both of them in the canoe, luckily I have a pretty large canoe and it just about, you know, bottomed it out. Um, but luckily it, it floated. And then the, the third piece is about that same length, but it was kind of like the end of the log and, and it was, it was not as heavy. More tapered. So, um, yeah. So we got the, got them in the canoe and then got it down to the, uh basically the location where we park and another thing we did that turned out to be just kind of a brilliant idea is uh, my dad has one of these little wagons that you use like around the yard and you pick up sticks like a little metal wagon with uh, rubber tires yeah we brought it along because from the edge of the water to the truck it's luckily it's not like a horrible long distance but you know, it's rough and, and we figured, well, maybe we can put the piece in the, in the little wagon and pull it. So we did that and that turned out to be just like a brilliant idea. Yeah. And our I, second. <laughs> looking at the picture here, it's, it's on the Instagram there. That, that was the best idea yeah. right there. You got the canoe, you got the garden cart, uh, you know, work smarter, not harder there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, so like the next probably, and then beyond that, the, um, where the where we park the truck it there's like a there's an extremely steep little hill and we're we were already thinking like there's no way we can pull this up this hill but my dad's truck has a winch on it <laughs> so we pulled the cable yeah we pulled the cable out of the winch that's to great. the bottom of the hill hooked it to the wagon and winched it up the hill so that Perfect. was definitely the you know second most brilliant thing we did that day. <laughs> right. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. There's so a will, there's a way, man. Yeah. So we in it. So once that, once we figured out it, all of that, as far as cutting it and then getting it to the truck that we really, you know, didn't have too much of a trouble um, that day. And our cut and Mark was there. So uh, he helped. Yeah. And um, so we got it, we got him home, you know, so that was a, uh, at least quite the project. Yeah, definitely quite the project. Well, that was just Man. to get it back, to, just to get it out yeah. of the water. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. It's an incredible story. First to find, you know. And here's, here's yeah. what I'm sitting in the back of my mind. Here's what I'm thinking. Uh, Tony and I were talking about this the other day. You know, you discuss this hobby of metal detecting. You, you discuss this passion that we all have for metal detecting, right? And if you're talking to somebody that's not in it, they what's the first thing they always say? You know, like, well, what's what? the best thing you found and how much is it worth? <laughs> they all want to know how much things are worth, you right. know? Right. And all they're thinking about is what gold have you found? What valuable yeah. treasure have you found? You know what I mean? And they would be probably, they wouldn't even believe that we've just spent an hour and a half talking about a piece of wood. You know what I mean? So, like, so yeah, the bullet was in the wood. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, you know, where was the gold, you know? So yeah, I mean, Tony and I are sitting here transfixed on your story. Just, Oh, I know. Put, putting ourselves right there. Like I could almost feel the coolness of the water listening to your story and looking at the pictures too. That's yeah. what's cool. If you're listening on the replay, I highly recommend you yeah. heading over to Aaron's uh, Instagram and yes. load these pictures as you're listening to his story. It really helps help tell the story for it's sure. Amazing. That's a big old wagon he's got there. My gosh. Yeah, I like that. I like that. You a look lot. on your dad's face. He's like, "This is working. This is perfect." <laughs> like you just, you know, found a cure for some dreaded right. disease. <laughs> you guys, well, we got it. You know, yeah, I mean, when we first realized how big it was and where it was located, I mean, you know. It was at first almost impossible, you know, thought to get it out of there, get it home. I mean, you know, we didn't know how we were going to do it, but once we kind of figured it out, and, um, it turned out to be, you know, really great. And it definitely added to the story. And, and it kind of is like you talk, um, when you tell, show people that doesn't, you know, are, you know, are not into the hobby like we are, or doesn't, or don't really know anything about, the relics, you know, they, they're thinking like, probably I'm crazy, you know, who would want a old <laughs> piece of tree with some bricks right. in it? Like, but it, it is, it's definitely like the coolest thing I've ever found. And, and then, you know, if you even try to talk about like a value, I don't even, I have no idea what it would be worth because there's, there, I've still yet to find, you know, 
really a similar example of, of something like this. So uh, who yeah. knows what it would be worth. Um, but it, it definitely is like the coolest, definitely the cool, one of the coolest things that's probably ever been found in our area. Um, just kind of the cool factor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah totally. Totally unique. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can We can totally understand that. Like, right. You can, you can find relics all, you know, all the time you can find individual relics buried in the ground, right. you know, in odd right. places. It makes you wonder what was this doing here? You know, if you're lucky enough, you come upon a camp that no one has discovered before. And, you know, it's like the jackpot and stuff, but something like that, where you're just, it really takes you back. You're like, this tells us, or with with pretty almost certainty what these soldiers were doing right here at this spot. <laughs> we knew there was a camp over on that side and look what they were doing. They were sitting Amazing. here shooting this tree, you know, and um, yeah. it just takes you there. Just like when you go to the DIVs, right? Anytime you go to a DIV hunt, you just, you can almost feel and see those soldiers camping there through the winter and stuff and, 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 and how they, how they lived by the things you find, the things you bring up out of the ground and out of those pits, you know what I mean? So right. like, this is almost like finding a pit. Like you discover something yeah. personal about yeah. those soldiers that were there thinking about what right. they went through and everything. And then it's just an amazing discovery, like absolutely crazy discovery. Congratulations, man. <laughs> oh, crazy. <laughs> your dad had to be excited too. Like what does the rest of the family think about it? Like, are they, is the rest of the family into the whole relic hunting or they, they think you're off your rocker a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, and they're all listening right now, right? I want to say a shout yeah. out to his dad. I think he's got some of his family listening there. So uh, <laughs> hello from me to you. But what do they think about it, Aaron? I, well, they, my mom and now my wife, I mean, I think they've always uh, somewhat enjoyed it. I uh, think it's pretty cool. Uh, this, this is definitely a, Again, to most people, you know, when you start talking about a piece of a log, and especially when you start trying to tell my wife that, hey, I'm going to put this in the house. <laughs> you know, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know what she really, she thinks it's cool. I don't know if, uh, how excited she is about me bringing this in the house, but I'm, you know, it's, I'm going to find a place for it, definitely. That's awesome. We're, we're <laughs> yeah. following, you know, the, the question of what kind of wood uh, had come up in the chat there. And, Looks like everybody's trying to figure it out just based upon those pictures. I think uh, we might have a confirmation. They said uh, just judging by the amount of bullets in it, they think it's dead wood, and it probably died of lead poisoning. There you go. <laughs> it's we, dead wood. Yeah, died of dead, lead poisoning. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bump, bump, bump. Yeah. There's a bunch of those guys out there. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, they, it, uh, they're having a good time with it in the chat. For they sure. are. They're they're going back and forth on it. They want to know actually. Um, <laughs> preserving the log what kind of steps have you taken to preserve it thus far yeah well yeah so yeah once we got it home i mean that was just like half the challenge right <laughs> so um we we got it home we we put it on the ground and we uh luckily you know i had to work all week uh so my we we uh my dad kept it wet um but, you know we just spray water on it and he covered it with a tarp so just until we could kind of uh, fool with it for a few days. And um, we then, um, I, well, first off, the two big pieces, you know, they're probably like 200 pounds each. So I really wanted it, I wanted to be able to um, get these pieces at least light enough where we could, you know, move them around. You know what I mean? So like I wanted to be able to move them into the house or if I ever had to like move it around or, and I definitely wanted it to, um, you know, I wanted to be able to at least take, take it to my club meeting, um, and, you know, show it off. Yeah. So we, we, we definitely, we tried to figure out like, I was like, what, what can we do, um, to, uh, basically make it lighter. So the two big pieces, um, and they actually ended up probably, like I said, they're probably a little over three feet long. And they're about um, 18 inches wide, and and really, the two big pieces were about you know that rank or 18 inches diameter or, or that thick or close to it. So we figured, um, well, all, and and then all the bullets were on one side of the tree, right? Mm -hmm. Because they'd been shooting in it. So yeah. we figured we could just cut off basically the back half of the log. So we used a chainsaw and just cut like 
long ways or uh, down the, the middle of the, the log and just basically removed the back half of it. And we left a section at the bottom, the, the, the original width, and basically and it's like four inches thick. And so that worked out perfect because it acts like a stand. So now you can just stand this piece up, Beautiful. you know, vertically where it's just standing up on its own. So we did that and that it's still heavy. It's still probably like a hundred pounds. I still can't really like pick it up by myself. <laughs> wow. But it's, manage, it's definitely manageable. I was able to uh, take uh, the one piece to the club meeting. Oh, wow. Um, you know, so with a little help, you know, I can move it around. So, <laughs> so we did all, we did that. And then, um, we, um, my dad actually, we, we used a pin pointer and we, we could locate, there were several bullets, you know, visible and there was a few bullets inside the tree that you could not see, but you could, the pin pointer would pick them up. And there was a, I don't know, two or three like that. So my dad one day used a chisel and a knife and kind of dug down and, and uncovered those so you could actually see them. So those turned out to be pretty cool just to be able to see them, you know, and they were a lot deeper into the tree than most of the other bullets, which is kind of unusual too wow. to think about. But, um, <clears throat> But to get to answer your question about preserving it, we we used um, after we did all that, we cleaned, kind of used like a wire brush and cleaned all the mud off of it and and all the jungle loose like wood, and then we used um, a product called uh, Tungle. Like you can just buy it at, at a Home Depot. It's for you know preserving wood. Yeah. And we brushed it on it, and we've uh, since brushed. Um, several coats on it and, and basically the um, the idea is that the wood still has water inside it and so the the idea is that this oil will soak into the wood and almost like take out the fill in the places where the water was or used to be and kind mm. of preserve it and that a friend of ours here in town um, told us about that method several years ago, and my dad found a, a couple years ago found a musket in the water that still had a lot of the wood left on it, and he used that <laughs> tungle for it, and he's and it's held up really well. Um, so we're hoping that that that's going to be the kind of the ticket for the preservation. Now it's it has cracked some since then, and we've added a couple done a few more uh, coats on it, but um that's what we've done so now we're pretty well finished with it although i may you know over time put more coats on it hopefully this will you know will work you would think help preserve it. yeah you would think if you know it's starting to dry out and it's extracting all that moisture and stuff it's going to start shrinking and warping and so yeah i'm, I'm sure mm -hmm. you you've done the best that you can given the circumstances of course yeah yeah the the oil hopefully will, will soak into it yeah. um i've I've actually, I've been, I was also pretty lucky, um, a Facebook friend, uh, Steve Phillips, and I, I kind of regard him. He's one of the, I would say like experts on artillery, civil war artillery over the years. And he's found a lot of, uh, uh, muskets and such as that in the river diving for him. He, he reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and I talked to him on the phone about it. And he told me about a couple of other products that, that he has used over the years. So I've got a, if, if what I've already done, if it looks like it's not going to hold up, um, then I, I've kind of got a backup plan. I'm going to do what he told me to do. And it's, he had some kind of a epoxy. It's kind of a real thin epoxy and mm -hmm. basically you coat it with it. So that, that's my backup plan. Interesting. <clears throat> well, I'm sure if you go that route, just document it on Instagram so we can see it. I, I'm going to be following along. I think uh, it's just an amazing find, the pictures uh, that you're able to capture with it and stuff. I've I, For the last hour, I've literally been clicking th just back and forth through all the pictures, looking at every <laughs> single one of them going, oh yeah, my I mean, gosh, look at that. Story, right? It's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, oh yeah, it's absolutely. The same thing. But uh, what did the guys at the club see? What would the, what the folks at the club think? Were they all thrilled for yeah, seeing yeah. it? I'd love to see it. You know, and I, I've, that was really when it hit me, like, how cool this is because, I mean, I've found some cool things over the years, um, 
but when I brought that in and, and I did a, and I basically told the story I'm telling you now to the club members that night. And, but after that, after I talked, um, kind of after the meeting, I mean, there were, they were all, everybody was coming up there and taking pictures of it. And, you know, that's when I kind of realized this is so unique. Nobody's got anything like this. You know, people, that's when it kind of really hit me. It was like, wow, this is really just, you know, so unique and, and just such a cool relic that um, it, it's just, uh, you know, just unique and rare, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, everybody, I never found anything like that in the past. You know, people may find, you know, belt buckles and such as that. And, you know, every year, but I mean, I've never had something like where people, you know, are taking pictures of it and stuff, you know, really looking at it like that. Mm. What a story, Tony. It's amazing. 